السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ پیس اینڈ بلیسنگس آف مرسی آف اللہ اپن آل آف یو لیڈیز اینڈ جینٹمین ویلکم اٹ سیمس ویری انیوژل دا ٹاپک دیٹ آئی واز سلیکٹیڈ واز واٹ ال قرآن سیز اباؤٹ حجاب دا ویل وچ از سپوز ٹو بی ریفرنگ ٹو دا وومین and that we can hardly few, see very, very few women in the audience. Maybe they know very good, much better what hijab says, or they are not interested. Men who have to guide the women may, inshallah, take the lesson, and then you can educate your sisters or daughters or wives regarding the hijab. Anyway, the lecture of what Quran says about hijab that I dealt was not specifically to women but because it is well known that the hijab the veil is referring to the women that is why I said in the earlier this message but what Quran says about hijab means the word hijab translated as veil not from only women but men and women both but before I discuss the ayahs related to the topic I would like to give you the understanding in the world what has people have gathered or have understood or has been known generally what is a hijab. You may have heard a word scarf, scarf or a headgear. A lady wearing a scarf or a headgear is referred in the most of the Muslim society as hijab. The word hijab that has occurred in the Quran, how many, I think five times, five times the word hijab has occurred in the Quran, which means veil. And two times the word has occurred hijaban, which is, which is also the same word, but just grammatically a little bit of difference, which means veil two times. And, and, and one more time is mahjubun, which means also hijab. The root letter is the hijab. So total eight times the word hijab, the word hijab, meaning the veil, has occurred in the Quran, and not once. I repeat, not once it is related to the understanding prevailing in the environment as a headgear or as a, a gown or whatsoever people are taking with clothes, facing the cover, facing the head, facing, covering the eyes or the face or the hands or the feet, whatsoever. Not once. First of all, you must know this. Hijab means the veil, a barrier between two people or between Allah and me, we, that's the meaning. First of all, we must understand what you're listening. So the meaning of hijab is a meaning, means the barrier or a veil, that's the meaning. But what, why we keep, a, we are having a hijab means we are, we are covering our clothes by our body and everything, we are covering by clothes. But what hijab is related to Allah and the ayahs that I will read and we'll find out what it says. First of all, I would like to give you two, three words of Arabic words that is occurred in the Quran to understand this lecture more easily. And that is the word saub, thawb, translated as clothes, cloth. I'm wearing a cloth. You, you people are wearing cloth. That is Arabic word is saub. Plural is siyab. The other word is the libas or labasa, which means to wear. I am wearing clothes. You people are wearing clothes. To wear means labasa or libas. What you are wearing is clothes, means a garment or a dress coat, a dress. It can vary from country to country or city to uh, nations and everywhere. Culture also, there's a dress. Every man and woman are wearing clothes. And that, when you say wearing clothes in the Arabic, it means thong. 
wearing clothes. Clothes means thaw, thiyab, and labas. Labasa means to wear. So all of you are wearing clothes, all of us. And the way we are wearing, meaning we are covering ourselves, our body. And once we are covering our body, we are, so to say, bringing a hijab between each other. Hijab. We are, the, the, what is the, uh, the, this is the suit I'm wearing, is a cloth made of cloth. It has become a hijab, a barrier between my inner body structure and the outside from you people. Similarly, women are wearing and men are wearing. So it, the clothes are a barrier at the moment between me and you and everybody. It, we wear clothes. Wearing a cloth is already a hijab. When a child or we people are born, definitely you all know we are born nude. But the moment the child is born, we cover the child, meaning what covering we do with the clothes is what physical parts of that child is the private parts. The whole world knows what are the private parts. So there are certain parts to be exposed and there are certain parts to be hide. hide. The hidden parts and the exposed parts. The debate or the dispute going on around, around the Muslim community is the what are the exposed parts and what are the hidden parts of women, generally speaking. But everybody knows what are the private parts and what are the exposed parts, generally in the whole world. Precisely when we'll deal the ayahs relating to this uh, so topic hijab, to veil, to, to create a barrier between each other, we'll see. But why I'm reading this, uh, this word, the clothes, already we are in hijab. When we wear clothes, we are hijab. Everybody is in hijab, we are very close. The limitations we'll discuss. What are the limits? That is we are going to discuss. What we can expose and what we cannot expose. Secondly, <clears throat> a self or a soul or a nafs in Arabic of human beings contains two things. Self of a human being contains two things. Or a human being contains a soul and soul contains two things the intelligence and emotions the feelings and once the human and one is the body structure the body so human beings are a combination of body this body and soul the self and the self contains heart where from emotions are exposed feelings and the other is the head the intelligence so the psychology contains the intelligence and the emotions and the body is the human body, male or female, the difference is the structure. So when we will discuss the hijab, it, it refers to both the body and the soul, the self. In psychology what you have to hide from each other and what you have to expose in psychology. Similarly, what body structure you have, what are the exposed parts of the body, and what are the hidden parts of the body, private parts. So this, you must understand that we are not only covering our body. We have to, we are already, we, know, we don't know, but we are already covering our psychological aspects. And in that psycho psychological aspects are emotions and feelings. Either you say feelings or emotions and intelligence. In the emotion and the feelings, the sexual feelings is included. The feelings. So we are covering from each other. How the lecture will go on, I will discuss first Surah Ali Imran 3 and Ayah 14. Zuyina lin nasi hubbu shahawati min al nisai wal banina wal qanatil al muqantarati min al dhahabi wal fidda. والخيل المصومة والأنعام والحرف ذلك متاع الحياة الدنيا والله عنده حسن المآب 
adornment for people is the love of desires from women and sons and heaped up heaps of gold and silver and marked horses and cattle and cultivated land that is the enjoyment of worldly life and the beautiful resort is near Allah the first word of this ayah is zuyina the word zuyina means zenith in English in English means adornment adornment women are adornment and the ayah says for linnas for linnas means mankind zuyina linnasi for mankind adornment are the love of the desires mina nisa from women number one well banin from the sons well qanati al muqaddri min al dhabi means gold heaps of golds and silver well khayl al musawwadi marked horses and the cattle and the cultivated land these five aspects are the adornment the love and the desire and the adornment for men and women both all men and all women would like to have heaps of gold don't you all men and women would like to have sons in compared to daughters all men and women would like to have marked horses as their ownership or cultivated land in their possession who will not like to have everybody ذَلِكَ مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ dunya. this is the mata or the enjoyment of this worldly life that Allah has made men and women both in a manner that these five aspects every man and woman every man and woman would like to possess and own they have the desire love and desire for these things these people so in that women is an adornment for both men and women for men and women both all these things every I've, I've explained to you but our top our topic is the woman so we come to know from this ayat that the personality of women is their 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 adornment for not only men for women also you are nothing but coal you know men you understand what coal is so you are, from now on you must know that men from men and women both women are adornment they look at each other they adorn for not you for, for women because women are adornment and men are also like them women also like their beauty and adornment so you must know the personality that Allah has made for women uh, the personality of the woman, woman is adornment now discussing we have to understand from from head from my head to toe physically and psychologically in both aspects women are adornment so and now since they are adornment physically you must understand also from head to toe completely physically and psychologically they are adornment for both sexes men and women both so what why why what Allah says in the ayahs about the, the, their adornment so they have to what they have to expose or and what they have to hide because they are adornment for both sexes so this is how the, the lecture will go on now we are discussing the hijab specifically for women you will not see the word hijab from now onwards you will not see any word ayat in the, any any word hijab in the ayahs but we will know we know the hijab meaning the barrier now what is the barrier or the hijab for women so in surah nu 24 ayah 31 allah says wa qul lil mu'minati yaghzuzna min absarihinna wa yahfazna furujahunna wa la yubdina zinatahunna illa ma zahra minha wal yadribna bi khumrihinna ala juyubihinna this is not a complete verse i'm just reading a portion of the verse and then i will read further the whole verse and say to the believing women to lower themselves from their insights and preserve their gaps private parts and do not show their adornment except what is obvious from it and this and that they should strike over jubinna their pockets with their coverings it is in continuation it is in continuation 
ولا يبدين زينتهن الا لبعولتهن او ابائهن او اباء بعولتهن او ابنائهن او ابناء بعولتهن او اخوانهن او بني اخوانهن او بني اخواتهن او نسائهن او ما ملكت ايمانهن او التابعين غير اولي الاربه من الرجال او الطفل الذين لم يظهروا على عورات النساء ولا يضربن بارجلهن ليعلم ما يخفين من زينتهن وتوبوا الى الله جميعا ايها المؤمنون لعلكم تفلحون and that, and that they should show their zenith adornment except for their husbands or their fathers or their husband fathers or their sons or their husband sons or their brothers or their brother sons or their sister sons or their women <clears throat> or what their right possesses or their subordinates followers other than from men who are skillful professionals or accept those children on whom women women's pudendum that is gentle are not obvious and they should not strike with their feet so what is hidden from their zenith adornment is known and turn to allah altogether o believers that you will prosper now i will i have just read the arabic text and the translation to understand easily I will uh, uh, read this whole ayat in three different portions, one little by little. First of all, we will discuss, come to page again five and six, and that is, وَكُلِّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغْزُونَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِنَّا And say for the believing women to lower themselves from their insides. يَغْزُونَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنَّا I pause here for one portion of that complete ayah. Allah is telling to, to the believing woman. Allah is not speaking to, to women. <coughs> He's not talking to women. Believing woman. And believing woman means who believes. Not just by the lip service. Say to the believing woman. Sorry. Say to the believing woman. يَغْزُزْنَا مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنَّ That they should lower themselves from their insides. بَصَارَتْ بَصَارَ بَصَارَ عَيْن means eyes. عَيْنٌ عَيْن عَيْنَ عَيْن Two eyes. In, in this ayah there is no eyes. If you note very carefully, it is بَصَارَتْ and بَصَارَتْ means insight. It is the insight. It is a sight but insight. So Allah is telling the women, believing women, to lower themselves from their insights, the insight that is already given to you by Allah. And most of the ayahs gives you insight. When we ponder on, on the ayahs, the Allah gives us the insight. So Allah is telling in this ayah that the women, believing women, should lower themselves from their insights. That is the first hijab, or this uh, a barrier they have to create. They have to follow this barrier. It is not mentioned here, but we have to understand. The women should not look downwards all the time. They should look into face to man, but from their inside, they should lower their emotions or feelings of or satanic spurs. They have to lower themselves. The first. The second is, وَيَحْفَزْنَا فُرُوجَهُنَّ And they should preserve their gaps or private parts. We all know the women's private parts. The word Arabic is وَيَحْفَزْنَا فُرُوجَهُنَّ It doesn't say cover your private parts. If it would have said cover your private parts, so you people are covered. You have to preserve, preserve your private parts. Cover is understood, but you can, you can cover your, uh, yourself by clothes, but you may not preserve your private parts. So specific Allah says, you have to preserve your private parts. Do you know clear? Do you want to know clear? Do you, do, do you want like to have clarification for that? You understand. Preserving the uh, uh, private parts and covering the private parts 
are two different things. Men and women can cover themselves by clothes, but they may not preserve their private parts. They can expose to do some adultery or fornication. So the ayah says you must preserve your private parts. The two hijab, the second hijab for the believing woman. Now this third, third phrase, walai yubdina zina tahunna illa ma zahra minha. Walai yubdina zina tahunna illa ma zahra minha means that they should not show their adornment except what is obvious from it. I, one phrase, walai yubdina zina tahunna they should not show their adornment except illa ma zahra minha, except what is obvious from it. What is obvious from it. So that means, I told you before, the, we have, don't forget the previous ayat. I will read this verse and then I will explain to you what are the obvious parts of the woman. Because Allah says that the woman should not show the zinat of the adornment. Wallahi yub deena zinat ahunna. They should not show the zinat or the adornment, their adornment, illa except mazara, minha, what is obvious from it. This is the main issue of the ayah, main issue that you have to understand today. We have already discussed from, from head to toe, physically and psychologically, women are the adornment. We have already said, this, uh, I've read before. So from head to toe, women are adornment. And in that, Allah is telling they can, they can show the adornment. That means they can show something. They cannot show anything except what is obvious from it, from the adornment. So physically and psychologically, both we have to discuss. What physical parts they can expose and what intelligence or emotions they can expose. What is the psychological, psychological aspects they can expose? So to understand this ayat, I will go to the next page and then we'll come back again. Surah Al-Maida 5 and Ayah 6. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, idha qumtum ila salah, faghsilu wujuhakum wa aidiyakum ila al-marafiq, wamsahu bi ru'usikum wa arjulakum ila al-ka'bain. O oh, you believe when you stand for salah, pray, wash your faces and your hands to the elbows and rub your heads and wash your feet to the ankles. This ayah is not complete, but I am just referring one aspect of, of this ayah in relation how it will be related to our topic, the hijab of women and men both. We are discussing women first. So Allah when addresses to Ya Yuladin Amanu, it addresses to both men and women both. Oh, you believe, men and women, when you stand for prayer, when you stand for salah, the prayer, first sulu wujuhakum, wash your faces, wash your faces, wa aidiyakum ilal marafi, and wash your hands to the elbow. Wash your hands, hands to the elbow, specific portion, hands to the elbow. And, and rub your hands on your head. Meaning, and wash your feet to the ankles. These are the parts that Allah is asking to wash and rub. The head has to be rubbed and the other, as for the face has to be washed, the hands to the elbows to be washed and the feet to the ankles to be washed and masa to rub the head before you come to salah the prayer. Can anyone tell in the audience who are coming for the first time, why is Allah is asking to wash these parts? Why not the other part? Anyone in the audience who has come for the first time? Any lady, just I'm asking a question. Yes, please. Anyone from the audience, why this? Why this part? Why not the shoulders? Why not the thighs? Why not the chest and other aspects? Yeah. Sorry? Very good. What you heard? They are the exposed parts. They are the exposed parts in the whole world. The face is exposed, the head is exposed, 
the ankles are exposed, feet are the ankles, and they are, but in the, 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 the they, this, these are the generally exposed parts in the whole world, men and women both. But because of the culture in the summer climatic conditions or the winter conditions, they may be covered or they may be exposed further. But the, 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 the ayah that is referring to is, is, is the portions that are exposed parts of men and both. So because in this ayah we have to come to know men and women both, physical exposed parts are mentioned in the Quranic ayah in relation to the salah, the prayer. That is not, but we understand by this ayah. The ayahs that I am reading, the word hijab is not mentioned in any part, any ayahs. Now I have the further ayah read. But we are understanding from those ayahs what is the hijab or the barrier, what, what are the exposed parts and what are the hidden parts from these ayahs. So in this ayah also it is not referring to directly to the hijab, but indirectly we understand these are the exposed parts of men and women both. Hands, I am repeating, the face is to be exposed, the head is to be exposed, hands to the elbows to be exposed and feet to the ankles to be exposed. Now, again I go to next, go, just go to the next page and I read, if you look in downwards, almost in the end of the ayah, page number, surah number 24, ayah 31 in continuation, just in the downwards, وَلَا يَدْرِبْنَا بِأَرْجُلِهِنَّا لِيُعْلَمَا مَا يُخْفِينَا مِنْ زِينَتِهِنَّا and they should not strike with their feet. So what is hidden from their zenith adornment is known. Now I will read the whole ayat again, but I just want to make a point you must understand. Listen to me very carefully. The first portion that I read, I read again. Wala yubdina zinatahunna illa ma zahra minha. Do not, the women should not expose their adornment except what is obvious. We have come to another parts what are obvious. Now this ayah says, the portion of the ayah says, and they should not strike their feet so that what is hidden from the zenith is known. So in this ayah we come to know the hidden zenith, the hidden adornment. I am reading again, look very carefully. And they should not strike with their feet. So what is hidden from their zenith adornment is known. So my question to you is, the rest part which the, we know the exposed part. We know the exposed, obvious parts. We know the expo obvious parts, the head, the face, and the hands to the elbows and the feet. Now let's say the women should not strike their feet on the, so hard that the hidden part is be known. So you know the other, what, the, what are the other parts? You know all of you, the, what are the other hidden zenith of a woman? The exposed zenith of a woman and the hidden zenith of the woman. The zenith, adornment, she's total adornment. I'm not just, we are, we are, we agree to that, that from hair to butt to toe, women are adornment. But the exposed adornment or the exposed part of the body and the hidden part of the body Allah himself said that they should not strike their feet. The exposed parts are the wuzu parts, which you do wuzu. The other is the hidden part. And that is also mentioned in the ayah that you should not, they should not strike their feet, women, so their hidden parts will be known. So other than that, like for example, some women say that the hair is the hidden part. So if they strike the feet, would you know their, their, their hairs? What type of hair they have? So if they strike the feet, what do you will come to know? That is the hidden aspect of women. I would like to discuss this also. What is a head? You know, it's really in language, in la if you know, we also use this word, where, where the emotions and the feelings are stirred up, what, what part, the physical part of a human, human man? What, from where the hum, emotions are, are felt or, or you know, heart. And intelligence? Head. So Allah, when Allah says, wash your muscle, your head, head is the, physical is head, is psychological would be intelligence, head. Face is, what is a face? Face, one is the physical face you see, and the, in, in, in psyche we, we can identify a woman or a man by face. 
and hands to the elbow is you work. What is your, your hands are representing what you work. What is your works, what, where you go and what is your, your hands do, what your hands do. And your feet is referring to, feet to the ankle represents your whereabouts, where you move about, where you go, where your legs take you, where you move about. In psycholo in physically, what are the exposed parts? I have discussed face. That means they can, they can, uh, they can show their face. Head, they can use, they can talk intelligently to any men, intelligently. They can show their feelings, emotions, because that comes from heart. And hands to the elbow, when they are working somewhere, they can identify we are working so and so place. What are their movements, where they move about, they can identify, well, this is my moving, movement, I move about this. So psychologically and physically, these are the exposed experts of women. They can expose themselves to physically, they can expose the, is the face that represents the personality, identification, and their woman identification in the world and in the Quran is that Hazrat Maryam was identified in the Quran as Imran's daughter and at Harun's sister. Because she was not married, that means she was referred to the to Harun as the brother and sister of Harun and as the daughter of Imran. And Nuh al-Islam and Lut al-Islam and Ibrahim al-Islam and other prophets' wives are referred as Ibrahim's wife, Nuh's wife and Lut's wife. No wife name is mentioned in the Quran. No prophets or no woman's name is mentioned in the Quran. They are referred as Nuh's wife, Lut al-Islam's wife or Ibrahim al-Islam's wife and Musa Islam's wife or Pharaoh's wife. You understand what I'm saying? So women are identified by men from their fathers or from their daughters, or sorry, from their sons or from their brothers or from their husbands. So that is why Allah is uh, represented, they can show their face can also identify that who are they? Meaning they are the daughters of so-and-so, they are the wife of so-and-so, they, the, they, they are the mother of so-and-so, that Isa Islam was, Maryam was the mother of Jesus, peace be upon him. So their face identification should be known. The face is an identification. So, so we were reading this, Wala yubdina zina tawna illa ma zahra minha. We have understood this. Now, further portion is, Wal yadribna bi khubri hinna ala juyubi hinna. And they should strike over juyubi hinna. Now, their pockets with their coverings. Now, what is juyub? Juyub is the plural of jayb. And what is jayb? A pocket. A pocket, jayb, you understand jayb in Urdu? And plural of jayb is juyu, pockets. So Allah says, well, yadribna, that, that they, should, they may strike with their coverings over the pockets. So we have to understand what are the pockets, physical pocket, pockets. I think you all of you understand the physical pocket of a woman. They are carrying something. The breast, the chest, you understand, they are carrying something that it is big, it's like a pocket they're carrying. So in psychology is, because they are, it is near, the heart is also here, so and Allah says that they should strike over the jubi in their pockets with their coverings, meaning that every woman in the world contains the feelings and emotions of the fathers, contains the feelings and emotions of their brothers, contains the feelings and emotions of the sons, Every man is telling something to the women. And women are having this information from all people. From the son they are having feelings or uh, information. So if they start talking from here and there, it will be confusion. So what is, because, they, because Allah has referred women as Malka Saba, the queen. She's the best of the politician. So why Allah has said on the whole Quran, Sulaiman is the king, is king, Malik, Malik, and the Malka is woman, Malka Saba, and her throne is, is referred as the, is the Azim throne. So women are the beautiful, uh,
queens because they know how if they are good maneuver they have to maneuver the husband they have to maneuver the son they have to maneuver the brother they have to maneuver, maneuver the whole family as such if they start talking behind their backs to everybody they'll be a fighting and war so that is why allah says they, they should strike over their pockets with their coverings so that they should not discuss so many aspects of life with other people whom they are carrying the secrets of others and their own that is that they say that this woman is a, the women talk behind their backs men also do so but mostly it is famous for women so this is the hijab or the veil that they stri should strike over their pockets they should not uh, discuss the secrets of their husbands or family talks or personal talks to other people they should not have any kind of friends male or female they should speak to the, their family talks not to other people this is the hijab of the veil of a woman that is they said they should strike over their pockets the pockets i'm telling you are physical i've told you what is a physical pocket you all of you know but at the same time the psychological aspect of this ayah is is that they should hold secrets of other people's or information that they have they are carrying and in in in, in, in you you note mostly that the uh, the information that are leaked by men is, is through women they hire women to find out to to go to talk to have this friendship with this man and find out what she, what kind of a man is and, and take out the information so men mostly they talk and women they just listen and they smile and they show this adornment and they get the secrets out so allah is telling this woman they should strike it this is the hijab of the woman we are discussing so now if you note till now we have discussed phys i'm discussing physical hijab continuously and psychological hijab continuously both now in this aspect if you look allah says wala yubdina zinatahunna they should not they should not show their zinat adornment except for their husbands i'm not reading the brackets i'm asking you what is the adornment they can show to their husbands as well as to their fathers is it physical of course you can say for that but this is one thing continuity with everybody so we must understand what is that adornment that can be shown to the husband at the same time they can show to their fathers or the husband fathers or their sons or husbands you must understand so this what is the adornment is it a physical adornment or a psychological adornment they have to show to their fathers psychological, psychological adornment Why not both? right they can't show it to the sons and you you i read the, the relation if you look, look at the relations you will come to know look if you say uh, husbands uh, uh, in uh, you just read except for their husbands or their fathers or their husbands fathers you can't show the the physical adornment to husbands fathers or their sons or their husbands sons or their brothers or their brothers sons or their sister sons or their women or what their right possesses or their subordinate followers other than from men who are skillful pracha now i will discuss if you note the word or o r or is very important here o r or women their personality i told you before the women personality allah has made in such a manner their adornment for both men and women so they can show this adornment which is obvious what parts are obvious and what psychological they can show but at the same time they must not uh, show the the emotional or feelings to everybody there is a limitation limitation is described in this ayah by using the word o r or 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 that means every woman in the world is attached to one person in her life they may live they can show this adornment because they are living with their fathers maybe husband maybe son everybody but they are, they can literally have this kind of feeling of emotion and passion to one personality because the word is or either the husband look now or except for their husbands or their fathers 
or their husband fathers they can't show or they this whole adornment to everybody Other, otherwise they'll again get confusion because they want to adorn the father by the father says look daughter you have to have this kind of dress you should have dress like this you should have this kind of hairs because the father has she has lived her life at the father's house the she was adorning the father by by pleasing the is the father but now when she get married she can't have that same attitude towards the husband because husband may is dislikes and liking will be different so once she is attached to the husband she has to look forward to the husband's liking and disliking so she has to adorn the husband now and once she has a son an elderly son the husband goes away then the, the son comes from in front of her first she leaves the father then takes the husband on then she leaves the husband then the sons come so every woman is basically is designed in a manner that she is always attached to one personality and among the children also is one personality among the two or three or four sons is also one son she will always be attached to one individual that is the true hijab of a woman she can't be adorn giving showing adornment to everybody we are talking psychological now we are not doing physical at all she can't adorn psychologically to every woman meaning making a pleasing the father also and the son also and the daughter also and everybody yes they can please to and to a limit but in the true sense she will be attached to one that is the word or is being used in the in the ayats to whom she is being living with to whom she is uh, sharing the life with uh, either it be, may be a husband or the father or the son or or whatsoever that she has to that is how her life pivot of life is that she has to adorn one human being in all these categories the one verse that uh, one portion of the verse uh, other than men who uh, or their subordinates she can uh, if she is living with one servant suppose and she can adorn this not sexually or we are talking about uh, she can uh, adorn this servant also other than men who are skillful she cannot adorn the skillful men because they can take the advantage or they can be, be fool them so they cannot because and a servant if you uh, please the servant he, he knows the limits so the allah says they can't adorn only one exception otherwise they can adorn everyone so in this ayah we have come to know this 24 surah number 31 ayah there were four five uh, for four five uh, hijab one was of the inside they have to lower their personalities from their insides they have to preserve their gaps or private parts and they cannot show their adornments physically and psychologically except what is obvious of it the obvious parts of the body parts we have come to know from the salah parts they are the hands and the face head and the hands to the elbows face to the ankles these are the obvious parts and they should not strike their feet so that hidden zinat is known so hidden zinat is something that can be known if they strike their feet that is the how we come to know what is a hidden zinat of a woman and i am reading the verse below below one first surah al azab 33 and ayah 59 <clears throat> ya ayyuhan nabiyyu qul li azwajika wa banatika wa nisa'il mu'minin yudnina 'alayhinna min jalabi bihinna dhalika adna an yu'rafna fala yu'dayn wa kana allahu ghafurur rahima o prophet say to your pairs of wives and your daughters and the women of the believers that they should make a base from their gowns on them this base is made so that they are identified recognized and they will not be hurt or teased and allah is forgiving compassionate <clears throat> Now in this ayat Allah is addressing to the prophet Ya ayu an nabi the prophet is addressed address and Allah say qul li azwajika say to your pairs or, or wives and your daughters and the uh, women of the believers these three categories are mentioned first is the prophet wives second is the daughters of the daughters of the prophet third is the believing woman there are three different categories to all of them allah says 
that they should make a base from their gowns on them. By wearing a gown, they should make a base. Base means foundation or you can say like a degree. What is a gown in, in language in the world, in English language, or what, when we wear a gown, in the, in, uh, if you note, whenever you are given a degree by any institution, they ask you to wear a gown, by, then that wearing a gown is an identification that you have uh, attained that degree. Similarly, Allah, we have already discussed the coverings, we have already discussed the exposed parts, but wearing a gown is an identification of the believing woman, is an identification of the prophet wives, is an identification of the prophet's daughters. And they can only be identified if their face is open and exposed. That this is the wife of the prophet, this is the daughter of the prophet, and this is the wife, uh, woman of the believer. So now, in, and the gown is an identification. It is not a covering. I told you before, we know the exposed parts. We have discussed the hidden parts. The hidden parts is also discussed, and the exposed part is discussed. The gown is an identification that they are believers. They should be recognized and they should not be teased. And Allah is forgiving and compassionate. So now we know, come to know what is a gown. It is not a covering. Clothes, women and men, you people are wearing clothes. That means you are already covering yourselves. You are already in hijab meaning you have made, have made this clothes as a barrier between you and me. I am wearing clothes, this is a barrier between me and you. But by some exposed parts and parts are there, your exposed parts are there. But what is a gown is not a covering, it is an identification. It is a base, a foundation that you are a believing man or believing woman. I am surprised the men are, standing, are wearing gowns. It was, a gown was asked by Allah to women to wear a gown. Men who take degrees who are alim wear gowns. The same gown is Allah is asking women to wear. And that gown has been asked by Allah. And Allah is giving the order <laughs> or giving this uh, base to women to wear it. So that they are recognized or identified. Nowhere in the Allah says the, to, in the Quran that men should wear gowns. So it is women, and remember it is not, again I'm repeating twice or thrice, it is not a covering, it is an identification. A gown is an identification that they are prophet wives, they are not ordinary wives, they are prophet's daughters, they are not ordinary wo uh, women, they are the women of the believers. And they are recognized. A gown is a recognition. They are in Arabic, ذَلِكَ adna an yu'rafna. That is the base is to be that identified or recognized. It is made so that they are identified or recognized and they will not be hurt or teased. And Allah is forgiving and compassionate. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, we have understood the exposed part, the private parts, and now the gown has introduced and gown is an identification so that they are recognized as believing women. Surah Al-Azab 33 and Ayah 33. وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِكُنَّ وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَ تَبَرُّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَةَ جَاهِلِيَةِ الْأُولَى وَأَقِمْنَ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتِينَ الزَّكَاةَ وَأَطِعْنَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهَ إِنَّمَا يُرِدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذِهَبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهِرَكُمْ تَطْهِرًا And keep a link in your houses and you do not decorate yourselves as you decorate previously in ignorance. Jahiliyat al ignorance. And establish the salah, the prayer, and give zakat, the justification, and obey Allah and His Messenger. Surely Allah wants to take away the dirt from you people of the house and to purify you as purified ones. In this ayah, Allah is referring to the wives of the prophets or the pairs of the prophets, the context of this ayah. It says, keep a link in your houses. And you do not decorate yourselves as you decorated previously in, 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 in ignorance. Now, we see in the world, and we have so many beauty parlors. 
women are being decorated. What is the reason for decoration? They adorn themselves. What, why they adorn themselves? Because Allah has made their psyche, they are psychologically in a manner, they are born like this, they want to be look nice, they want to please, they want to be adorned. That's, that's the psychology. But they forget this, they are already an adornment. They are already an adornment by men, for men and both. We have read that ayat, that Allah has made for men and women both, women as an adornment. If you see a piece of gold, it's an adornment. If you uh, make the gold in any manner, gold, you will be attracted towards gold, won't you? Or you see a marked horse, which is, I'm talking about the adornment. If you see a sun, you don't have to adorn the sun to be good, you'll be more adorned. Similarly, women are adornment. Gold is gold, you like gold. You make shade the gold into anything, make a ring out of it or make anything, but it will remain an adornment. Similarly, women are adornment. It will remain adornment. So women, when decorating themselves, forget that they are at being adornment. So they think psychologically they are not so good. They are not being adorned. So they think that if they adorn further, which they, this whole system has been made, maybe, maybe it's better. But they forget they are already adornment. They may be looking pleasing to someone. Why are you making more pleasing to yourself or for, for, to others? Because Allah says these are the, the they are the they are the people. Allah has mentioned that you have to adorn these personalities. One of the, these personalities, you have your psyche is built in in a manner. You do not want to adorn every Tom, Dick, and Harry. No woman wants this. They want to be. They want to please one personality. It's the, in their psychology. So if they want, if they are adorning themselves, they are making confusion for other other men and women both. So if it has become a fashion. So that is why Allah says, we are talking about the, is, the content of this ayah is referring to the Prophet's wives. That keep a link in your houses and you do not decorate yourselves as you decorated previously in ignorance. You may have done it in before in ignorance, but now you do not decorate, number one. And then also keep a link in your houses. Meaning a woman ha should have a link in the house. They are asking why we should remain in the house all the time. You don't have to remain in the house, you should decorate the house, you may look after the house, all the internal house affairs, you must know it. You are made like such. We, Allah is telling you something, we, you already know it. From the very childhood, I have got daughters, I have got sons. I was a son myself when I was young, I never played houses, children playing with dolls and this. In, and this uh, houses, little, little houses that you buy and bring for you. My daughters still play today. Small little daughters. They are playing. Why they are playing? Who is teaching them to play with dolls and these houses? Barbie doll and these houses and why? Because you built in your personality. So Allah is asking to have a link in the house. It's natural. It's but natural. You like to have a house. You like to work in the house. You look after a house. It is your psychology built in. By force you don't have to go out. So now, if, uh, in this ayah, Allah says, uh, establish the salah prayer and give zakah justification and obey Allah and his messenger. Surely Allah wants to take away the dirt from you people. It's in plural now of the house and to purify you as purified ones. The, the most important part or aspect of, the, of this verse related to our talk, the topic is that you have, the women should have a link in the house. They should keep a link in your houses and, you, and they should not decorate as they have decorated in, in ignorance. Surah number Azab 33, Ayah 32. Ya Nisa and Nabi, Lastunna Kahadim Mina Nisa, Inik Takaitunna, Fala Tahdana Bil Kaul, Fayat Maaladi fi Kalbihi, Mardum Wakulna Kaulam Marufa. O woman of the Prophet, you should never be like any one of the women. If you take guard, then do not subjugate with the saying, So the one who has sickness in his heart will have desire, and you should speak. A saying of recognition. Maruf. Now Allah says again to the woman of the Prophet. 
that they are not like any other woman. All these ayat that I'm reading is believing women or the women of the Prophet. They are not ordinary women. So Allah is also saying you are not like any other woman, any ordinary woman, any other woman. If you take taqwa or you take taqwa, you do have taqwa, then do not subjugate with the saying so the one who has a, has a sickness in his heart will have the desire. Now you must understand what is this? Whenever a man speaks to woman and the woman speaks to man, we can have conversation behind a veil. Meaning behind, we have to have a hirail in hijab, we can speak to each other. But we must not forget that if the woman should not speak or if the, they should not be subjugated to any ex-personality ex or generally, so that a man who is having a sickness, a sickness in his heart will be moved with desire thinking that she is interested in me. She just, you know, she just in her normal way she's talking. Because she's an adornment, she's talking normally. And every woman knows that. She doesn't mean so many words, the man thinks that she means it. Because she's an adornment, so Allah is asking this woman, she, Allah knows that this woman are adornment for both sexes, men and women, women both. But the man who has got a sickness in his heart will be moved with desire. That is why Allah says, do not be subjugated with the saying, so the one who's has sickness in his heart, will have desire. And you should speak a saying of recognition, meaning without feelings of passion and emotion. They should speak straight. Have straight dialogue, straight discussion, not from the heart, not with feelings. So this is again in a hijab or a veil of a woman, even in speaking. They should speak in a manner that that veil should be kept. And that veil is not like uh, ad adorning or subjugating themselves, say this and that, you know, like this. What they do in the shopping. Or well, many, many times they know how to uh, play. Uh, they don't mean, of course they don't mean, we all know that. But what happens, the, uh, this is the wrong attitude of women towards, towards men. Because they are adornment, they should not take the advantage. That is why Allah is saying, do not subjugate yourself. Now, this, up till now, I have read the verses related to women and their hijab. And all these ayahs, the word hijab, the veil was not present. You may have noted this. But we have deduced from the reading of ayahs that what is the hijab of, or the veil of a woman. Now, I would like to have a comparative view with few verses where, according to the Bible, the Jews and the Christians' faith, where, where the, the, the veil is also mentioned in the Christian Bible. Then uh, we will read what the Quran says about the hijab or the veil of men. But first we read what is the hijab veil of a woman in the Bible. Page number 15 and 16. According to Good News Bible, Jews and Christians' faith, 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 5. And any woman who prays or proclaims God's message in public, worship with nothing on her head, disgraces her husband. There, there is no difference between her and a woman whose head has been shaved. You look here very carefully, the headgear comes. The headgear. Any woman, this is a biblical law for the Christians and the Jews, and then you will look the nuns. Nuns and the sisters in the Christian world wears a headgear. Wears a headgear. And no, no country or no country will say any word to that nun or sister who is wearing a headgear because she's a nun. It says because they can show in the Bible any woman who prays or proclaims God in public worship with nothing on her head disgraces her husband. There is no difference between her and woman whose head has been shaved. So the sister nuns and nuns also get shaved also. You know this or I don't know you know this or not. On 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 10. On account of the angels, then a woman should have a covering of, over her head to show that she is under the husband's authority. I am reading the Bible. And this is biblical law. That the woman should cover her head to show that she is under her husband. 
شو دی ہسبینڈس اتھارٹی دس از بائبل سو اینی وومین از کورنگ ہر ہیڈ از اکارڈنگ ٹو کرسچن دے آر دے آر فالنگ سو دا ننس اینڈ دا سسٹر ننس یو نو گو اینڈ سی دا آل اوور دا ورلڈ دا کرسچن ننس اینڈ دس مدر ٹیسا اینڈ ایوری ویئر اینڈ دا ننس آر ویئرنگ دس ہیڈ گیئر فردر ان ون کوارنٹین الیون ورس سکس اف دا وومین ڈز ناٹ کور ہر ہیڈ شی مائٹ ایز ویل کٹ ہر ہیئر اینڈ سنس اٹ از شیم فل تھنگ فار اے وومین ٹو شیو ہر ہیڈ اور کٹ ہر ہیئر شی شوڈ کور ہر ہیڈ If she feels shameful, then she should cover her head. First of all, she does not, if, if the woman does not cover her head, she might as well cut her hair. And say it is shameful, then for a woman to shave her head or cut her hair, she should cover her head. If the woman feels shameful when she has shaved her head and feels shameful, she should cover her head. And further, 1 Corinthians 11 verse 15, but for a woman, it is a thing of beauty, her long hair. has been given to her to serve as a covering. You know this long hair business, women should have long hairs. Where did you get the idea? Bible says, women should have long hairs, big, big, long, and that's in, my one is more bigger than yours, and this line, silky hairs, big, big, long hairs. Allah says, but, Allah astaghfirullah, Allah, Allah says, Bible says, but for a woman, it is a thing of beauty, her long hair, and has been given to her to serve as a covering. They can cover themselves by giving big, big hairs. You understand this? So this is a comparison that headgear is a biblical or a Christian or a Jew uh, belief. And it is practiced by the nuns and the Jewish uh, uh, religious women.